This is a story, a toy story, about being proud, being humble, about wanting to belong, and about Christmas shopping. The window of a famous toy shop in Regent Street was filled with gaudy and colourful playthings made from every kind of plastic you could imagine. Huge purple snowflakes bounced up and down, fairy lights twinkled, and tiny steam trains with flickering headlamps <coughs> rattled around spindly railway tracks. Every corner was stuffed with toys. Fluffy toys, shiny toys, ball games, board games, card games, rotating pink ballerinas, teddy bears slumped against wrapped up cardboard boxes, puppets overflowing from hampers, three-quarter sized rocking horses handcrafted from laminated chipboard, and games consoles fashioned from fluorescent extruded polyvinyl. At the very summit of this mountain of wonders, one object had established a commanding position. A very special piece of military kit, a yellowy, browny, khaki-coloured camouflage tank, which featured independent, remote-controlled caterpillar tracks, power-assisted low-ratio spin thrusters, and a revolving turret with twin 12mm anti-aircraft guns. Sitting on top of this tank was the very latest and most expensive action person, covered in gadgetry, ammunition and armour, and brandishing a terrifying array of weaponry. He had found that it was important to carry plenty of guns if the other toys were to respect him. In fact, he had used them, or threatened to use them, to climb to his current position. Nobody would dare argue with him, or even speak to him for that matter, and this, he realised, was appropriate because, after all, he was superior to all the other toys in many ways. Action person's ambition was, of course, to be chosen. He didn't want to be bought by just any child, though. He wanted to go to a good home, probably one owned by important people who had an important family. What? Only very grand people would be able to afford him anyway. But the days went by in the run-up to Christmas and, well, quite a few of the other toys in the window found families to go to, but he didn't. At first he didn't mind too much, as it just showed that he was special. But as time marched on and the weather grew colder outside the shop, and as passers-by shuffled past with their coat collars turned up against the icy Regent Street winds, he began to wonder whether he would ever find a home. One day, just before Christmas, there was quite a crowd in the shop. People were hustling and bustling and grabbing things from each other, and someone jostled someone else who knocked into the pile of wrapped up cardboard boxes, and suddenly the whole lot came tumbling down. Action person was knocked off his tank, which crashed to the floor and drove off out through the main door into the Regent Street traffic and was never seen again. Action person himself slid down the back of the display, but he caught one of his guns on the saddle of the rocking horse and landed heavily, twisting his leg right back to his shoulder. A boy accidentally stepped on him, crushing his foot. The other toys were too frightened of him to help, but a shop assistant picked him up and plonked him on the glass counter next to some Harry Potter colouring sets. But now, with no tank to sit on, he looked clumsy and awkward, and with a broken foot, it seemed less likely that he would find that special family. By Christmas Eve, action person had been stripped of all his guns and all his clothes. They were sold off, cut price, an unrepeatable bargain. Action person was chucked in the skip. It was bitterly cold. He didn't feel quite so proud now. He began to feel sorry for himself. I don't care about grand important families now, he thought. I'd be grateful to be part of any family, even the humblest family. To be with a family that didn't even have a home, that would be better than this. But nobody would want me now. I don't see how I could be any use to anyone. 
At the end of the evening, in spite of the extended trading hours, Action Person was still in the skip when the lights went out and the shoppers went home. At a quarter past eleven, a priest who was looking for a crib figure found him lying there. He picked him up, brushed him off and dressed him in a bit of old rag. You're exactly what we need for the nativity scene in our church, he told him. I'm very glad I found you. You can help us because we're missing our main shepherd. <coughs> it didn't matter that Action Person's foot was broken because he could stand up in the straw and no one would know. He was placed on a little hill overlooking a little stable. He watched over the sheep through the night and in the morning he was the first to see the baby Jesus. Daddy, I'm following the dad.